right, good morning, everybody. Good morning, if you're tuning in. It's Paint with Josh. It's Saturday Sessions. This is the fun show. Normally, London's here, but she's over in Texas today. So, I'm going to be doing it all alone with all three platforms on YouTube, Facebook, and over here on TikTok. So, give me a chance to get everything ready, right? Don't just tune in and leave right away. You can see I took a lot of time and prepped this canvas last night. Did our black gesso trees with our acrylic black gesso, right? Which is just basically acrylic black paint. And uh, it kind of makes our, our area where we want it to stay dark, very dark. And then when we come across it with our liquid white, you're gonna get all these cool foggy effects and stuff. So it's only like 15 bucks a bottle. You can get it at Michael's or in my Amazon uh, wish list or my Amazon store which is amazon.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. So, I know, I'm trying. Bro, I'm trying to teach you. I got it, I got it. Let's see. Where's that no use for a name? If you could uh, put a comment up here, then I can make you a mod. No use for a name? Anybody over on TikTok? Okay, we've taken our, our brush and I've dried it off. And remember, I'm doing this all alone today. So give me a break. I'm trying to do it without freaking out. Okay, we're gonna take our liquid white and get it all into our white section, but not everywhere in one spot, right? I don't wanna just put it up here and work it this way. It's gonna be very thick over here and very dry and thin on this side, right? So I'm trying to get it everywhere, trying to dump a little bit in, and then we can really work it, right? And you want it to be very, very, very thin, very thin. If it's thick, then your sky is gonna be very thick, your clouds are gonna mix in with the color that's underneath them, it's just not gonna work as well. So everything is nice and Thin little layer, right? You don't want to have too much. Watch this. Just with the smallest little bit, you can start to get that light to come across our trees. So you had your light coming in from right here. We can put the sun literally right over here, like it's setting down through the trees and lighting up this whole area. And the more that you take that white and put it into our dark area, the brighter it's going to be. So we're not going to do that just yet. I'm going to finish the edges over here. Got to prep those with our liquid white as well because I love finishing the sides. And if you don't finish the edges, then you gotta go buy a frame and your buyer's gotta do all this stuff if it ever gets purchased. If you're lucky enough to sell a painting and it gets purchased, right? Then uh, your buyer doesn't have to do anything. They can literally take it out, hang it right up. They don't have to get a frame if they don't want to. Right? And that's why I like to finish them on the edges. So in order to finish it on the edges, you have to prep it on the edges, right? And this thing looks like it's gonna fall out of my easel. So we're really gonna crank down on it. There we go. All right, we've got our, our liquid white, right? Just like that, littlest bit. You don't need a whole lot, okay? Just a little bit so you can just see the ridges of your fingerprint. Or if you wear gloves like me and you're super cool, then you'd just be able to see all the little dimples in the canvas from those little tiny holes in the canvas, right? That's what you want to see. If you go up there and you touch it and you got a big old goopy blob of white on your finger, then you have way too much white up there. And that white is vital, you have to have it. So guys, let me see, where are we looking? Where are we watching from? Tell me where you're watching from, Mississippi. Excellent, thanks for joining guys. Thanks for all the follows, you guys are awesome. Thanks for tapping. Okay, everybody on YouTube. Oh man, I got a new order already? Got a new order already. So, this painting was available for sale, but like five minutes before I started the show, it sold, before we even touched anything. So, before there was even paint on the canvas, it sold. So, and then I just got another order, apparently. But if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, you'll be able to find all the paintings that I have available for sale. And uh, it's all 40% off. And then I have prints and merch and shirts and sweaters and hoodies and pillows and all sorts of stuff. Go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And I'm going to try to stop from shaking over here. Like, I'm literally I'm trying to get the paint out, and I'm like this. I'm shaking, trying to get it out. I don't know why. I don't know why. So, okay, we had a little bit of our liquid white, put it into a little kind of a petri dish, I call it, because something's got to be growing inside there, right? And that's going to be for our highlights later. Okay, let's finally go through all the colors that we have today. Again, tell me where you're watching from, guys, and I'm going to keep coming around and checking and making sure that we're looking good. Hey, Judy. And we got Ayanda. Let's see. Nancy's watching. Shasta's watching from Utah. We got the London Candle Co. over here on, uh, on, uh, on TikTok. So, okay, jeez, Louise, jeez Louise. Watch this, right? We're going to take some of that white, start working it down, 
kind of over those trees, you get that little foggy, faded look. Very cool. Right? And the more white that you work into that tree, the further and further and further they're going to look away. So let's throw a wicked old sunset. That's what we said we were going to do. We don't have to sell the painting, right? But you're going to be able to name this painting. So the, uh, the person who bought it, Melanie, uh, she purchased the painting, and she's going to need help naming it. So start thinking of a name. What would you name this painting? Rivers Crossing something blah, 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 right? What would, what would you name it? Come up with a name and start writing it in the comments, and we'll see... Maybe Melanie will choose the name that you suggested, right? Watch, we're going to take that and just go right over the top of those trees with that very, very, very light color. And we're going to work it into a little bit darker as we go, right? Darker progression. We've got a little darker down there. Maybe we'll leave this light area for like a little sun. I like that idea. Have a little sun popping through the trees right there, right? Very cool. Got to finish our top where we've got that same color on the brush. And all it is is the yellow and red just mixed in at different hues, right? Different values of color. A little bit darker over here, a little bit lighter over somewhere else, and then we'll start to blend it, right? Now we're going to bring in our crimson, which is a very dark, deep, like, purpley-ish red. Like a mauve or a, <clears throat> like a maroon color, right? Very deep, dark color of a red. Now as we come out here, we're going to go into the blue just a little bit, and if you work into this progression from light to dark, you're going to get the most gorgeous color purple onto your brush by the time you get out here to the side. And then you start blending all of that in. And it starts to mix and blend and twist and turn. And you get all sorts of gorgeous little colors, right? Make sure you have a little bit of crimson in between your blue and your yellow section, though. And it doesn't matter what it looks like right now. That's the best part. We'll finish our edge over here since we're missing the black. That's all right. And just put a little bit of color over there, right? Now, I'm going to try to match this over here and go a little purpley into our water, right? And then we're going to go a little crimsony red and work our way backwards. So let's start with that yellow, yellow red over here. Oh, yeah, just right into there, right? A little bit of brightness onto our, onto our canvas. And then where we go into a little bit more red, maybe back in there. And then a little bit of our crimson, right? And we'll see what it looks like. You never know what it's going to look like. But that'll be a cool looking little river as it's running down, especially once we blend it all out. Gotta blend it all out afterwards, right? And that'll be neat. So, let's wash off these brushes. Again, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? You're gonna be able to name this painting. Remember to go over and follow all the little moderators, follow all their accounts. Gift if you can, tap the screen, comment, share it to your friends, send it over to your grandma. If you like my shirt, tell me you love it, right? Your girlfriend watches me while you're at work. It's probably true. It's probably true, guys. It's like the best flex ever, right? Because it's probably true. Probably. Okay, we're going to take our brush. We're going to wash it off. Tell me where you're watching from, guys. What's your favorite sandwich? When is your paint anniversary? Because my paint anniversary is coming up soon. It's coming up soon. All right, now, here's the best part about that whole sunset. You can take and work these colors back and forth, like one of those sequin pillows where you slide it over and you get one color, you slide it over and you get the other color. So we're going to take our brush, whoop, just like this. We're going to come in here to our lightest area first. Wherever you think your lightest spot is, and just start working that area, right? It's going to become lighter because we have that liquid white on the canvas, right? Anywhere that's not, that doesn't have any color, we still have that liquid white there. And that way it helps all of these brighten up on their own, blend into their own little gorgeous color, right? That would just take you forever to do it on your, if you were trying to mix that on your palette and get it on your brush to put it up here, it takes so long, right? So, this liquid white is just literally the best thing ever. It helps blend, it helps lighten the colors, it helps everything move, right? Based off the amount of paint, the amount of pressure, and practice, right? The three P's of Paint with Josh. Paint, pressure, practice. Gotta do all of them, right? The more we bring that color down into the trees, the more they brighten up. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Now we're going to come out here into that darker crimsony color. All right, work that in back and forth. Just kind of dragging some of that in, dragging the lighter color out. And just working it. Work it, girl. Work it. Work it, boy. Okay. So we're going to take a little bit of this. No, Siri, I don't need, I don't need to go work out. I get my work out here, Siri. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your, your efforts. Okay. We'll take our little blue streaks and swipes and just with the amount of pressure like I was saying you can drag that blue 
It wants to come over and cover up all of our sky. So don't let it. It wants to do it, right? And again, with a, with a clean dry brush, we can take some of this pink, pull it back into there. You know what I mean? Like it all depends, like those little sequin pillows. What's your pressure? What's the pressure there, Captain? There we go. I like to have it where it's not just a straight line, right? You have all these little differences, differences in color, differences in brightness, all these little things, right? Maybe we'll take the smallest little bit and we'll start to work it in from the edge, just so it's not a super bright thing out there. All right? Crisscross, back and forth, you blend your whole sky to however you want it to look. And go across the whole thing, bing, bang, boom, right? We don't have so much paint on the canvas that we're gonna drag all of that color backwards and forwards, especially based off of our amount of pressure, right? <clears throat> now let's go back here and blend our little bit of water back in, see if we can't get a little bit of that color in there. Come back in here, and just crisscrossing, letting them work together. And that doesn't look too bad, actually. Doesn't look too bad for some water, and then we can always go back and fix it, right? You never know what it's gonna look like exactly. Never know exactly. And I don't want it to all look the same all the time either, right? It doesn't have to match the sky perfectly. That's going to be the best part. Okay, cool. Now we've got our idea. We can lay out our little plan. It's almost like a little rainbow river down in here. It's very cool. Okay, let's see. We've got that. Let's throw in some a little sun. So Jesse Lynn's art is one of my super squad members over on Facebook, and she sent me these pack of... Uh, of filbert brushes from my wish list. So thank you, Jesse Lynn. We're gonna use one of these filbert brushes right now to make a most gorgeous sun you've ever seen. Yeah, let's do the sun first. Okay, we're gonna come in here just on the one side of our filbert brush, right? Just on the one side, so we don't have it on the other side. And you don't wanna fill up the whole thing. It doesn't have to be the biggest, giantest amount of paint on the brush, right? So again, tell me where you're watching from, guys. What's your favorite sandwich? Make sure you give me a thumbs up over there if you're watching on YouTube. And let's come right in here, right? We're gonna take our brush. Just like that, right? Just on the one side. Knock the camera over, come up here. I'm gonna we'll push right in there, and I'm gonna, I like to rotate to the left. And you can spin these brushes until they just make the most gorgeous little circle you've ever seen, right? You get your little soft little sun out there. Now, depending on the size, or depending on how, big, uh, how much you push your bristles in and let them rotate, watch this. There we go, that's the rotation that we wanna see. And they spread out. It's going to soften the moon, uh, the sun or the moon. It's going to blend it. It's going to take it all the way back into that sky. Very cool. Very cool. And that's pretty much all we're going to need the filbert brush for. Unless, I, I don't know, we might use it down here. But let's dry it off. Wash it off, dry it off. We'll put it away for a little while. Mm. Got to have our Red Bull kick in the morning. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I like that, that's very neat. Okay, now let's throw off some, maybe a far away cloud up here. Clouds are probably the easiest thing that we do around here at Paint With Josh, because you don't have to, it doesn't have to look a certain way. It's just gonna be a big smushy, just a mess up there anyway, and then we're gonna blend it down. So they're never gonna look exactly like mine are. They're not gonna be the same shape. You're not gonna have the same amount of paint on your brush. What the heck is going on outside? But I can't even... Someone's getting their car washed or something. Try to ruin my show with your car while your car is not that important, bro. We got thousands of people watching over here. Okay, we're gonna take our brush just like this, filled with white paint. Because when we mix it in with all this color, it's gonna wanna disappear. So let's come up here, knock it over like that. And who knows, just come up into there, mushing it around, maybe we'll go out in from our our bright area out into the dark area. Now I don't really want to get too much more of that dark paint, so let's go load it up again. Now it's got a little bit of that darkness underneath because it mixed in with all this blue and crimson and all that stuff out there. Now we're gonna take our brush and very lightly, so, so, so lightly, right? Because all we're doing is just trying to let that white blend down a little bit, let it mix in, and depending on our pressure, right? We don't have any paint on the brush, so we're all based off pressure. We can let it stay bright by not blending it too much or blend it more and like make it go further away. Right? Kind of blend further and further and further out until there's nothing left to it. 
All right, now we're gonna come in. We got that little bit of shadowing in here, all right, that we can come back across and add a little bit more depth. All right, so if we had a little bit of white in there, a little bit more, not trying to cover all those little areas, right? You have to leave some of them. You gotta leave some of them out there. That's why they're there. Aha. Right, you get these little bits, soft little things, just adds a little bit of depth to the cloud. And then you decide what you want it to look like. You want it to go mix down more? Should it be a little bit brighter in some spots or darker in some spots? You decide what you want, and then you go for it, right? Let's add a little teeny bit of crimson up into here. All right, if all that sunlight is back at the bottom, in my mind, maybe we might have like a little difference in shadowing up here, just with that bit at the bottom. Right, then again, you go back and you decide what you want it to look like. And the more and more and more you mix, right, the more soft it becomes. So you decide that you're like, okay, yes, I like that. That is a nice one right there, okay? Now we're gonna come in one more time over here on the side because we've got this extra room to fill, but we don't wanna come down too far come down too far and cover over your trees, then it's like a whole bit of cloud is rolling through our, our little area here, and that's not what I want. So again, we're gonna come up and mix it down. And all we're doing is gonna let that paint flow down this way. That's all it is, right? It's so lightly touching, so it blends in very softly. Right? And again, you decide based on your pressure what you want to show. How bright do you want it to be? Where do you want it to, you know, mix down? You don't want to cover up all of our clouds, of course. Uh, all of our trees, sorry. There we go, soft little thing. The more and more you go, the softer and softer they become. Until they're just not even there anymore. You could literally take it and blend it all away if you wanted to. All right, let's do one little contrail out here. People, some people call it a chemtrail. Depends on the, uh, Depends on your uh, level of conspiracy, right? I call it a contrail. So it's just a little streak of white. We're gonna go twice this way. One long stripe, and it's very soft and very far away. Super easy little thing. And it uh, just adds a little bit of real, like a little bit of just real life in there with us, right? So far away little clouds. Let's wash some of these brushes off. So tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? When is your paint anniversary? My paint anniversary is coming up soon. April 12th, and I would have been painting for four years. And for anybody new watching, I'm Paint with Josh. You've probably been saying, is this Bob Ross? No, Bob Ross can't do a live show, obviously. He's no longer with us. Um, but yeah, I'm Paint with Josh. I've been painting for four years now, just about. And I do wet on wet oil painting, uh, just like Bob used to do on TV. I'm ready for my own show, so let's go PBS, Netflix, anybody affiliated over there? Then uh, I'm ready, let's do it, man. Let's get the world back into painting again. It's gonna be awesome, right? Now there's our little pathway, we're gonna come down, it goes off the thing and then ends up coming back right here. Maybe we put a bush, maybe we hide it, maybe it ends up looking good. We'll decide, we'll decide that when we get there. And that's the best part about it, right? You can always change and mix and do different things. Now in the meantime, I'm gonna get a paper towel because I don't want any bit of color underneath into my, my black area down here just yet. I'm trying to keep it as dark as possible. And that way in my mind at least, it will, uh, it will stay how it's supposed to look and then I can judge it. That's, that's much better. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna add a little cabin I think off in the distance. A little bit of grass, some foreground trees. A tree sticking up right here that comes down gonna to be totally awesome we're gonna have the time of our lives so tell me where you're watching from and what is your favorite sandwich or when is your paint anniversary because I would love to know there we go a little bit of our purpley mixing in with the orange mixing in with the crimson the yellow oh, it's gonna be fantastic it's gonna match our sky perfectly now let's come down and drop a little bit of grass in there gotta beat the devil out of the brush right Okay, 
Now, in order to make some faraway grass, we don't have to have it be the brightest thing you've ever seen, right? A little bit of our darker greens, our sap green and our and our phthalo green over there, maybe a little bit of the cad yellow just to brighten it up. And I'm talking about like two, three swipes. Nothing crazy, no big thick chunks. All right, maybe back off in the distance, we had this little bit of grass that lived back there. All, right, all based on how you pull your brush, the angles of your taps, right? So we're working down in this angle now. There's not a whole lot of room back here, so we're not trying to fill up all those little dark areas. Right, it's gonna be much darker, uh, much brighter in front of the sun than it would be on the other side of the tree. So you could even take a bit of yellow, pop a little bit of yellow over here. Right? All depends on what you wanna do. What does yours look like? I always say that. Okay, let's throw our path in before we lose that little path back there. A little bit of white, a little bit of brown, just to see what it looks like. A little yellow ochre as well. All right, we'll come back here. And we had that path. You're never gonna see all the path. So it came out like this. And it turned and it come down this way. And it got a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. All right, and it's heading off the, heading off the sign. That looks pretty cool. Looks pretty neat right there. Just making it a little soft. All you gotta do, nothing crazy, right? Came down, never gonna see the whole thing. So make sure we cover that edge with a little bit of brightness on our grass, something like that. It'll go and it'll turn and go back up the other way. Now, what if we had that same little bit down in here? Just tapping it in, right? Working in our little things. Just different angles. Coming up, leaving a little bit of darkness, right? You don't have to go all the way. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. It doesn't have to look exactly the same. Right? Those little angles, little differences, little things help, right? Just working in that progression of color where you're starting a little bit brighter up here. And then as it gets down further, it's, it's you're dropping off more and more paint off of the brush. And that way it's not the same color everywhere. Get all these little things. Man, it doesn't even need a cabin. It's so stinking pretty like that. Oh, it's awesome. Come down to the edge of our grass. There's a little bit of grass down here even. Man, that is just the coolest thing I've ever seen, you guys. This might be the shortest painting of all time because I could literally put some grass in over here on the side and call it done. Like, it's so just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Of our brown as we come up to our path over here. I might have to just make prints out of this guy. And our little bridge. That's very cool. I like that, guys. What do you think? What do you guys think? We should just stop right now. It'll be a 24 minute painting. We'll just do another one, huh? We'll fire up another painting. Man, that looks really cool. That looks really cool, guys. So make sure you're tapping the screen, liking the live, sharing it over to your friends doing all the stuff we're supposed to do, maybe off on this side. Pick back up with our little path. All right, just messing about. And then we go back and cover over whatever we don't like, of course. That's kind of neat, guys. I really like this one. You know, artists are their own worst critic. We're always like, ah, oh, I could have done that better. I could have done this better. I really like this one. It's turning out awesome. Okay, should we throw in a little house back here? We gotta throw in a couple trees, we gotta do a couple things. So, I'm not gonna be the shortest live of all time. I mean, I could literally leave it just like that. And it looks so sweet. So sweet. Since we got the grass on the brush, all right, before we get rid of all this green and wipe it all off and all that, let's go in. Again, I'm not, I don't have any big streaks or anything. It's all about our angles, working it down, working it back, filling in a few little places, right? It doesn't have to be the brightest thing, but you don't have to have super dark areas either. You just, I mean, you you know, you guys all know what grass looks like. Go outside, check your front yard. And then come back in and go, okay, there's a couple little areas of brown, there's a couple areas of yellow, there's a couple areas of this, there's a couple areas of that. And then you just paint it, see what it looks like. There we go, guys. Oh, guys. Man, that's cool. I like this one so much. I hope you like it, Melanie. Since Melanie purchased it before the show even started, I was down in the garage still. 
So I'm actually I'm in such a mood to paint today, guys. I might come back uh, after we end the streams on uh, YouTube and, and uh, Facebook and TikTok. I might come back later on if you guys want. Tell me in the comments. If you want me to later on, I might come back and do maybe one or two more paintings today and give you guys another chance to, uh, to buy. Those people that missed out on the opportunity, give them a chance to buy. So you can always go over and uh, check out everything I have left at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. I just seem, I can't seem to paint them fast enough to keep any, in, any new inventory in the store. Because as you guys know, we paint everything on camera. Because otherwise I'll post a picture and someone goes, did you do this? Is there a tutorial? And I go, no, I should have been filming. You're right, I should have been. So I film everything, every painting. I was gonna do uh, a painting last night and uh, I didn't want to, I knew, uh, no, sorry, the day before, I was going to do a painting earlier in the day because I was home all day. And I was like, oh, that's supposed to be painting 700, and I can't do painting 700 off screen and then be like, oh, no, we did 700 earlier, guys. It turned out good. You should have seen it. Wish you would have been there. Like a little bristle right here. Oh, he's way back in there from doing the, uh, from doing the gesso, even. Come here, you little sucker. I love leaving a couple bristles in the painting. It's just make that, I mean, to me, that's a real painting if you got a couple bristles in there, right? Some bristles stuck into your painting. You know, at least it's real, it's not a print. Can't print bristles in there. Man, that's cool. I really like that. Okay, guys, let's check the comments. What are we looking at, guys? What are we looking at? What's a mod? Uh, a mod is a person that helps me out in the comments and um, keeps an eye on people. Uh, keeps an eye on the bad you know the bad people that come in to try to troll us all and just be mean and stuff all right so guys everybody give me a thumbs up over on YouTube this one's looking excellent let's put in a few little trees since we've washed our brushes and we're gonna pop in a little tree back here so in order to make our a little a couple trees that stand out closer than these trees we need to make them a bit darker and a bit brighter right because they have no detail back there. They're almost in this mist. They're lost. Lost in the lights. Too much light back there to see all the detail on those guys, right? But these guys down in here, they're going to be a little closer to us. They're going to be a little easier for us to see. So we're going to mix up our three dark colors, our uh, Prussian Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Midnight Black, right? Unless we didn't go through all the colors, let's go through them right now. Sap Green, uh, Purple, Lavender, Mid Yellow, uh, let's see... Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, uh, Yellow Ochre, Bright Red, Thalo Green, Prussian Blue, Lizard and Crimson, Midnight Black, Titanium White. Okay. Now we've mixed up all those colors into our little dark area. Now we're going to come in here and load up our little brush. Man, if this isn't a place that I want to live out here. Right sort of in front of this tree so we don't cover up too much of his little branches. And bring him down like that, right? Come over here. And all our little trunk is just a little guideline for our little guy. Let me start popping out. You see how much darker he is than the other other tree behind it? That's going to help him stand out. We're going to come down, we're going to pop in, push out, and we're going to come over here, pop out our other side, and our cool little pine tree out here in the distance, right? And you decide what you want him to look like. Doesn't have to be so super thick or like a big triangle, you know what I mean? But now we can tell he's sat down here at the base of all of this grass. You can just tap in a little bit of that grassy area, turns it dark, just like a shadow would. Don't even have to add any more, really. Put a little bit of green over here, just a, just a touch. All right, but nothing too crazy, that way he's got a little shadow. That's kind of cool. Now we're going to add in one more little guy way off here. He's going to be much smaller because he's going to be kind of on the side of our cabin. So what if we had a guy back in there on the other side of the path, right, just tapping up little things, trying to stay out of your guys' way. He's not so thick. He's not so big. Right? He's a little further away than this guy. And of course, they're not all the same size, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit bigger or or not in certain places, but I like having the one that's a little further away, be a little bit smaller. This helps my eyeball. Come in here and tap at that grass, right? 
It's that darkness pulling it back towards the away from away from the sun, back towards old Uncle Paint with Josh over here, right? Old Papa Paint with Josh over here. Take our knife, run it straight up. Need that little pointy top to it. Very cool. Now I'm going to take a much smaller brush. We're going to come in here to our sap green color. All right, and since it's a sunset, it's not so bright outside. Maybe we wouldn't see all of the stuff. So let's take our sap green. We're going to slap it in just right over the top. Whatever comes off, comes off, right? We don't need to see every single piece. It's a very almost overexposed sunset. And so everything can be this darker green back in here. Woo! I like that. I like that. That was just straight up uh, sap green onto that thicker paint just to have it still remain that texture. And then who knows, maybe we got the smallest little bit of like a lighter color green right in here, just on the tip top, this side. Just a few little things that got lit up. We don't want the whole tree to be the same brightness, though. That's not what we want. That's not what I want, anyway. You do whatever you want on yours. That's not what I want on mine. Now, our highlight, our high lit side is going to be on the right side of this guy, right? If the sun was coming down, it would hit here and it would hit here versus anywhere else. We're going to get a little liquid white. It's going to help it come off of our brush easier and stick to our tree a little bit better. I'm right, going to come in there. Again, we don't need a whole lot of liquid white. It's going to want to change it very fast. So I just come over and then I mix it into the pile that I want. Pick up a little bit more, drop it over here, and that way there's not so much on the brush. It's not big and goopy and globby, right? And then maybe we can create this cool little tree. Soft little things, way off in the distance, right? Never going to see the whole amount of anything. Oh yeah, a couple little brighter areas on this guy. Little things, remember, you don't have to see the whole bit of tree. Little bits. Little, little things. I wonder if Bailey's awake yet. I wonder, what do you guys think of those trees? Let me know. Hmm. Thank you for all the follows. Oh my heck, we actually have 10 people watching on YouTube and we have 10 thumbs ups. So that's cool. All right, let's take our we're going to build ourselves a little cabin right here. So there's no paint, there's no trees, there's no anything, right, besides the stuff that's back there. So you don't really have to scrape anything off. I just want to make a little, in my mind anyway, where my cabin's going to sit. It's going to be right down here, Maybe like a little witch's cottage or something. I don't know. So we're going to scrape up this dark color. I'm going to mix a little bit of the two browns in there with it. And get this darker brown, and then we'll just go over it lightly and highlight it. Mix in some of that dark purple though. It doesn't have to be the brightest thing. This isn't our highlight, it's our base. You want it to be that very dark brown. Very dark. Come over here, and who knows, maybe we had our little bit. Move it up a little bit higher like that. We're gonna come straight down, just pushing the whole knife, bending it, pushing it all the way down. All right, just like that. I'm gonna come over here. Have our little bit of our house. Right there, can be very cool. This guy, come straight down again. Go over another, a whole nother length. We're gonna pull that bit down. There we go. And that's the front of our house. Excellent. Scrape up some of this excess paint. So you don't need a whole bunch on there. That's very cool. But that just looks like a 2D flat little bit of a house, right? So what we need to do is create our extra walls over here on the side, extend it down a little bit so it looks like it's actually down here on the path, right? Extend our walls out here onto our side. We got the back of the house, the side of the house now. And again, scraping up any amount of that stuff. And then let's go off. I like to have like a little dip in my roof, like a little downward angle. 
and start sliding it down. And you decide when you want, you know, what shape of your roof is. I mean, you could leave it like that, like a piece is missing if you wanted to, really. Come up a little bit higher on our peak. There we go. Just with the knife, sliding it down. Let it go off. There we go. It's starting to line up now. We're building it. We're building it. We don't want to put, you know, we don't have to do the entire house. If you want to have another tree sit down in front of here, you don't have to fill in the whole bit, right? Let's just take a fan brush because it's a smaller surface. And just very lightly fill in, pulling it down, the same angle. We have our wall over here, right? Just extending our house. Somebody didn't get the permit right. There we go. Perfect. Just like that. And then just sit it on that little downward angle so it looks like it's kind of sitting back, nestled in. That's very cool. All right, and again, we're just going to pull this down just so it's soft and it'll take some uh, highlight paint for us. Very neat. Very neat, guys. I hope you guys like that. Do we like that? You guys like that little house? It's probably one of my favorite paintings of all time. Hmm. Thank you for all the follows over on TikTok, guys. I love you. And uh, anybody who's sending any gifts, I, I can't see them, but trust, I love it. I love those gifts. All right, let's add a little bit of our wood color. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna make up some wood green. A little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of brown, a little bit of white. And look at this gorgeous color wood. All right, but you can't overdo it. If you over mix it, then it's not gonna look like wood anymore. Add a little of our darker color in there. You just leave those streaks. Look at that. It's like, um, I mean, look at all that. Fantastic. I have a piece of wood right here on my on my table, on my palette. I'm gonna wipe off the knife. I'm gonna grab that lighter color and come up and just very lightly straight down. And it's like that. Turn our knife. Very light. You don't have to have a lot of pressure. You don't have to have a lot of paint. Right? The amount of paint, the amount of pressure practice. And again, we're kind of pushing hard because I want it to drag. I don't want it to break like a mountain. I want it to drag in there and have those little bits of color come down just like wood. Oh, it's fantastic. That is a grand, fantastic little bit of house right there. So you come right to the edge of the, your, your roof. Now we've got to make the side a darker color. I mean, you could leave it exactly like that, actually. You don't even have to add anything else. You really don't. It's fantastic. Okay, we could do anything on the roof that you wanted to do. You could take your darker color. You could just slap in some little bits of, of uh, shingles, just so you have a little bit of texture, a little bit of detail. Just tapping them up, bringing them in, just like that. Very cool. Then we'll go back and we'll add a little tree on the side of this old guy. All right, and even down here, it looks like it's very foggy in our roof. Put it in right there. And then you've got to make it line up with however you see it in your brain, right? However you would see it. I'm going to take a little bit of our dark color just for some extra texture back here. So it all feels the same and looks the same. Even though I know we're gonna add a tree right there, it's all good. Okay, now I need to make up a little bit more of that darker color. So our crimson, black, blue, mix it up into that same old pile. And I'm just doing a little bit this time because we don't have a whole lot of uh, tree to make. It's just a small little tree back here. Back into that dark brush that has that same color on it. And that's the best part about oils too. This brush is still it's not hard, you know what I mean? Those acrylic brushes dry so dang fast. It'd be hard by the time you got done. So back over here, and I'll have it just coming out. Just right there, right? Right pop behind the little house. Come up, slap in a few little things, little details. And now we're gonna start to fill in that space in between the house that we didn't finish, right? And a little bit of tree, just like that. Very cool. Very cool, guys. Okay, we're gonna wash off that old brush. 
don't have to wash the brushes every time because eventually we go back and use the same sort of brush or the same shape brush on a, another color. But that's starting to look really neat. Now, back in here, remember, we're not going to have so much brightness. So maybe a few little bits of just straight up sap green. Right down in here. That way you got that dark green on top of your, your darkest shadows. Right? And then maybe we'll take that little bit of our brightest green. Put it right up here on the top. A couple little bits. Once it got down back behind the house, it couldn't really brighten up anymore, right? Very cool. Very cool. Man, this one's fantastic, you guys. I might have to make prints out of this one. I just might have to make prints out of it. Because it is turning out just excellent. I'm going to do one more little bit because we have all this space right here behind our house. And even though the house looks fantastic, just to add a little bit more depth, we're going to go popping in another little bush right here by our tree. Just like that. It just adds another little layer, another little layer. Take our green. Put it back behind there, work in our grass, different little things, different light areas, different dark areas, right? Very softly. Don't want to have too much paint or pressure, but you can never have too much practice, right? Never have too much practice. All right, let's come back in here, wash this old sucker off. I can't even check my orders because Oh, I'm using all three of my devices. All right, let's come in. We're going to brighten this little guy up. Maybe he's got a little bit of red on him. I love it when they got a little bit of red, a little bit of crimson. All right, so we're going to put our crimson -y side back in there and then pop in our red side right over the top. And we get these cool little things happening back there. Cool little things tapping in the base. In where do you want it to be? You have to leave little things, leave little areas. It's very cool. Pop in a little door for our guy to live. Just by scraping out an old shape door, right? Sometimes I don't, sometimes I like using the entire width of the blade, but on a smaller cabin like this, you don't really need the entire width. Come in here, take our dark color, feed it back inside. Here we go, sha like <laughs> Since people yell at us for going, don't tilt, steal Bob's noise and go, Shoo. that's Bob's, you can't steal that. I go, okay, shazoo. I don't think they like that any better. There we go. A little bit of darkness back in there. And then we can go back and push it back. Right? Shape it up straight. Take some of it away. Shoo. And what's really cool, you can even scrape in. If you take some of that darkness, you can scrape in a few little bits of boards, some indications of some old boards back in this old guy. Very cool. That's really only for when the buyer's truly looking at it for all the details. Take a little bit of our white and just line the edge and let it blend in with that black, right? So it turns gray. Oh, we don't need it to be snowy white up there. We just want it to be a slightly different color. Not pure white, not pure black. A little different, right? Like that looks like the snowy edge of our, our snowy cabins. So we're going to come in over the top and just mix it up until it kind of goes away a little bit, right? Push it back like the little sequin pillow that it is. Just have that little bit of detail back in there. That's all we need. All we need is a little detail. A little bit of brightness in our grass. Man, that's so stinking neat, you guys. This is not just the neatest painting you've ever seen. In what? How long have we been going? 46 minutes? Probably the neatest thing you've ever seen in 46 minutes. Give me that. Give me that at least. 
happen today. We got all these little differences, little things, little bits happening. We turn, we start going up. This is such a cool painting, you guys. How much do you love it, Melanie? Melanie just must love it. She just must. Because I sure love it. It's turning out fantastic. Okay. Get that over there. Turn a little bit of water back in here. And make it a little bit darker even. Right. The best part is we can still go over our bridge and fix that area. But just to have this guy kind of go a little more purpley. Lighten it up. We have the little change, and then we'll pop in some some bushes right here in the front to hide that transition of that color. Be gorgeous. Let me do it right now. We'll come in here with that dark color, our black, crimson, blue color. Just mix them right up on the brush. Dab them all in. Right, slapping them in, getting all of that thick texture onto our brush. And then we we'll come up here. And you just start popping over, hiding a bit of that color. Right, where did your, how, what, what part of your river can you see? You know what I mean? Because I can see about that much. All depends. All depends on you. We took a little bit of dark, snuck it in along the side of our bit of river back here. Every river's got a little bit of dark land underneath it. Right, just like that. Especially so far away from the sun. I'm gonna see all of this stuff over here. Gorgeous! My goodness. My goodness, you guys. If I'm just not in love, then I don't know what love is. There we go. Soft little things, right? Just phantasmic. Looks like we got too much. There we go. A little bit of white over the top. That'll help it blend itself away. There we go. Now it's not so crazy bright. Very neat looking though. Very cool. That's more like it. Now a little bit more of that white down in here. Just so we have some ripples, some something, some sort of something happening. Take our last little bit, pop in another little bush down here, and then we'll hide that little piece of thing. That's gonna be cool. Maybe I want that crimsony, that little crimsony bush back here, right? So we'll pop in the crimson down around the bottom, turn it around for the other side. Pop in that red. Oh, so pretty. Oh, I don't know why I love that so much. I don't know why I love that guy so much. All right, now again, we have to come up, hide those little bits of our water that we don't want to see. A little bit of bushes and stuff over on this side. A couple little hedges. Maybe he's got some roses. Maybe they're all that same color. But again, I never like it to be all the, the same. So even if we had a bunch of you know, red flowery bushes and stuff out here. Can't have them be all the same red flower, red flowery bushes. You got to change your colors up a little bit. I mean, maybe the person was very particular that lived down here and it only, they only liked roses. And so they only planted red roses. But in my mind, there's going to be a few different colors out here. So let's pop into our green, a little bit of green, pop it in just at the base, right? Because the green, we're not trying to highlight the green bit. That's just happening down in there. Just a little bit of green. Now I'm going to turn the brush, pop it into a little bit of our yellow, just so we have those clumps of paint on there. Look at that. And then that little clump of paint with a light amount of pressure is going to add these cool little bits. Little dab of paint, little bit here, little touch there, a little different yellow. Just flowers everywhere. Watch me just pop in those little flowers over here too into our grass. Little bits of dandelion fuzz. Trees will buzz and kids will blow dandelion fuzz. I think it's bees will buzz. Why did I just say trees? Because we do painting. Trees will fuzz. Okay. Anybody who has a kid knows Frozen. Come on. And I and I don't even know the lyrics anymore, which is sad. Bailey laughed at me yesterday. She goes, you don't even know what it says anymore, Dad. I was like, you're right. What is the second line? B 
bees will buzz and I swear it's kids will blow dandelion fuzz, right? Isn't that what the song says? Kids will blow dandelion fuzz and I'll be doing whatever snow does in summer. <laughs> while, I do, while my neighbors are like, what is this guy doing up in that room? What is he doing? Somebody correct me, am I right? Kids will blow dandelion fuzz. Is that the second line? Trees will buzz. Uh, why do I keep saying trees? Bees will buzz. Kids will blow dandelion fuzz. I swear, that's what he says. And I'll be doing whatever snow does in summer. I wonder if Bailey's awake. I'm sure she is now. In summer. A bit of our white. I don't know why you guys watch me. I'm literally insane. This crazy guy. There we go. Pop our little things back in. A little bit of white on the top. That's going to look really cool. I like that it's black. For whatever reason, I just love that it's like deep ivory black wood. And again, we don't have to have it be, you have it be whatever you want it to be. So let's switch to a smaller brush though. Let's switch to a smaller little brush. And we're gonna come in, I wanna make a little bit of gray. So I'll make a little black, a little white, just mix them until I like the way that they look. All right, and then we're gonna come over here with our small little brush. And we're gonna come down and go over the top of this guy where we had my little highlight. Don't need too much. I want it to remain dark. There we go, a little gray so it's not just this straight white. Oh yeah, look at that, you guys. Very light, very light pressure. You know how long it took me to get this angle right last night? As I was sitting there playing with the gesso, it took forever to get it right. There we go, gorgeous. Oh man, it almost, if we leave it dark like that, it almost looks like the shadow underneath. Okay, let's see what we can do with this. All right, so we had our gray. What's Bob gonna say? Let's get crazy. Let's, let's get crazy, he said. This is your bravery test. Not that, Bob. This guy. There we go, make it a little bit darker. So it looks like it's like feeding down, right? Very cool, very cool. We got a little bit different color of our thing, right? Okay, I like that. I like that color. It's like kind of concrete-ish. But it's gonna be very, very hard to see. Oh, that's it. That's it, right there. That's it. There's our little bridge. Oh, you guys. Just such a small amount, because I don't want the bridge to be bright. I don't want it to be as bright as the top. And we have to keep that dark bit at the bottom. We have to keep that down there. Oh yes. Oh yes. Now it looks like it's very deep and dark underneath here as we're crossing over our little bridge, right? Man, if that's not the coolest thing ever. Take a little bit more darkness. Gotta put it on this back side. I wouldn't imagine it would be so bright all the way back here. Man, you guys, this one is freaking neat. I like it. I might, I literally might have to make prints of this, I swear. I know Melanie won't be upset. That is so cool. We'll put a big old sticky tree too right here on the side. Big old giant monster tree to help push everything back. So, who's ready for a giant tree? That's what I want to know. Who's ready for a giant sticky old tree? Guys, what happened to my fan brush? Oh no, it broke. That's okay, well, I've got more. The fans send me fan brushes all the time. So I literally have like 14 in rotation on my table in one go. But apparently that one wanted to come off. He didn't want to be there anymore. Okay, we're gonna come back into our white. That little, slight little gray color, just so we can highlight this little guy right here, right? Gotta have it be just on the top. 
got to be a different color, and then we're going to work it back until it looks blended enough, right? And that's the best part about the oils. You can go back, you can add more, you can make it dark again and start over. Do whatever you want to do. If yours needs like a little bit of darkness around the edge, right? Maybe we'll take a little bit, just with the fan brush even. There we go. Just like that. I mean, guys, you decide what you want it to look like. But I mean, that is just awesome. Just awesome. All right, now what happens if we had like a little flat of brown, like it was a little, little step, something, some kind of something. Right angles though, right? Now we got a couple little steps over, maybe you come up, down over the side. I mean, that's, the, that's not the coolest thing I've ever seen. I mean, geez, guys. Uh, Filling her in, changing the colors up a little bit, adding a little bit of darkness in places where it needs to be dark, right? Where we'd have our shadows the most deep dark. We just gotta fill it in and then blend it like our makeup, right, ladies? Blend it like makeup. You just wanna have those little differences, those little bits of light, those little bits of like a little line of color will go just a whole long way. Just even that little piece, that little stripe down in there. Just goes a long way. All right, now, I'm gonna pop in just a little bit of grass right into there. It's trying to grow and grow up, over, up and over the bridge, right? All right? Little pieces over here. I'm gonna pop in another bush over there too. Just a little guy. There we go, hide some of that piece back there. Hide some of our stuff over here. Grab up our, our brush. Let's wash this old guy off too. We don't need too much more of this bush making brush. Gotta beat the devil out of it. Right? Got it. Gotta do it. And then you gotta dab your brush off on a paper towel. Get used to doing that. That's the key. Dab it off on a paper towel and uh, you will be happier. Always to have it off before you go back and put it away. All right, let's take a little bit of that yellow ochre, a little of our lighter color yellow in here, see if we can't just snap on just a couple, couple little bits of, well, we ended up covering up our whole path, but you guys know where it's going. We're obviously going there, and then we come back around, right? It's okay. It's okay. All right. Gorgeous little thing in there. Or just putting a little bit of extra green back around the bottom. That way it's not all the same color. A little bit here, a little bit there. A little bit of difference here, a little bit of difference over there. A couple little red flowers. Oh, so pretty. I just love the red in there. Need that little pop every so often. Maybe there's a couple little bits in here. Or a little touch. He's trying to, they all try to grow up through each other out there. You know what I mean? Never like to have their own room. They're all trying to grow in real close. I'd like to be spread out. That's why the, that's why the person that built that cabin out there is all the way out here, away from everybody. But all the plants, they like to be friendly. Grow and try to get all that water they can get, right? Very cool. Okay, now let's do one more. I mean, you could do a big sticky tree. What do you think, uh, what do you think, Melanie? Let's see, thank you for the, um, oh, London, you're awesome. Are they like little paws? They're like, oh, they're cat paws. Super cute. So we got one thing to do, guys. Should we do a big old tree? Some faint indications of stonework on the bridge would be crazy cool. Okay, we can do that. Because Jeremy sent us a wicked awesome liner brush the other day, we could try to go back in and do just a couple little cobblestones, right? All different shapes. What does yours look like? Dang, that would be kind of neat right there. 
just again, going through that light gray and black and white color that we had, just so we don't have too many little details. And with this liner brush that Jeremy got us, they are looking pretty cool. Just like that. Couple little things. Little things here, little things there. We never see them all though. Right? You're never gonna see all the bits. So you don't have to have too many crazy details is the key. How's your stone work, Jeremy? How's that for some stone work? But cool too is if we add a little bit of dark around, like underneath that bit of light in certain areas. And then we'll come back, get some more black. And that'll add like a little bit of extra shadowing inside. Yeah? You see what I mean? See what I mean, jelly beans? A little bit of extra depth back in there. But it wants to, you know, blend away very fast as well, so you gotta be quick. And you gotta have a fair amount of paint on the brush. And again, we don't wanna have too many details, so don't go crazy. But just a little bit here, there, and everywhere else. Few little dips and things that looks really cool. What do you think, Jeremy? Jeremy! Ooh, patches of purple flowers in the ground. I forgot about the purple guys. I forgot about the old purple flowers. So, what do we do now? Let's add. Let's add another little bush out here. We'll put some purple flowers on him. Okay, we're gonna come in here. I'm gonna tap into our little guy, into our black, into our blue. Maybe we had just another little bush live down here by the water. There we go. You sneak it in there, right? Just wherever you want. You go back, sneak it in. That's the best part about the oil paints. Now leave a little bit of room at the base so you can work it down with your grass. Right? You have to tap it in, make it soft, otherwise it doesn't make sense. It looks like it's floating out there. Now we're going to wash off this brush and we'll do a double highlight shadow on the same brush and show you real quickly, because again, it's not a whole lot of space. We don't need a whole lot of stuff, All right? So what if we took that dark purple, got it on the one side of the brush, just tapped it in, All right? Got our light purple on the other side, uh, on the other side of the brush. That way we have one on one side, one on the other, and then just using the corner, pop in a little bit, a couple little things, and then the brighter corner, you get those brighter flowers to pop out. See that? You get those little differences. Darker purple, lighter purple, darker purple at the bottom. Oh, guys, if that's not the prettiest thing you've ever seen, just my heck. Let's get a few little guys in here, too. Just a couple little bits, little flowery bits. Man, that purple starts looking so freaking cool that you just want to do it everywhere. But don't do it everywhere. Can't have it be everywhere. What if we did one more little bush over here? Just again, because they look so stinking cute. That purple now is just taking over my brain. And I knew I wanted to do it. So if somebody, whoever said that, thank you for that. Because I knew I wanted to have some purple in there. And I would have been bummed if I finished it and we didn't have any purple in there. And we're like, ah, oh, I forgot about the purple. All right, I'm going to come in, going to tap again. Maybe this guy's got a little bush by the side of him. Just by the side of the, the, side of the old path, right? You go back and throw them in wherever you want. And you don't have to do it like me, right? You don't have to go back. You can do, place it out. You can plan yours out ahead of time. I'm literally making up, making it up as we go. So as you're painting, you know, as you're going along doing this video, just put them back in before you continue, right? Do it the right way. All right, let's come back to that darker purple again. There's a darker purple. We'll put it down in there. Oh, yes. We'll come back with that super bright purple on the top. So pretty. Those little differences in there is all you really need. All you need is a few little differences. A couple little purple bits in our flowers back there. Oh, Ay, it looks so good. It's so nice, guys. So nice. Tap it over. It's like our growing over our path. Man, that's cool. That is neat. Well, guys, like I said, this one already got purchased. So, can't buy it, but we're about to name it. So, 
what name do you think you would name this painting? And maybe Melanie will go through and choose the name that you suggested. So hit us with your names. What are you going to name this painting, guys? You get to name it, and maybe Melanie will pick. Maybe she'll have to send me... Oh, I don't know. She'll have to send me a message over on Etsy or something. I don't even know how I'm going to get it. I have all three of my... All three of my uh, devices in motion right now, so I can't even can't even do it. And London's not here to tell me, so I'm just might have to sit back and wait in the comments. So again, guys, tell me what do you want to what do you want to name this painting? And maybe Melanie is going to choose your suggestion right here after I wash these last few brushes. And then I'm going to come back later on today, and maybe we'll do another painting. And if that one sells, maybe I'll come back tonight on TikTok and do another painting. Okay. Keep that over there. Our two inch brushes all washed up. Now let's add in the old family. All right, with that same old liner brush that Jeremy Clark got us off of our wish list. Thank you, Jeremy. He's a super squad member. He's awesome. And we'll throw him in right back here. All right, and these birds represent my family. They go into every single Paint with Josh painting that we do. And they represent myself, London, and our gorgeous daughter. Who might st if she's still asleep, I'll be amazed. I will be amazed if she is still asleep. With the amount of noise that I've been making right next to her room, I would be amazed if she was still asleep. Oh man, all right, let's spin this guy around. Maybe Melanie will mm, ride it. One of the mods will ride it. Somebody tell me, what are we naming this one? Let's see, Misty Evening, River of Joy, Cabin on Sunset River. Oh, Melanie says River of Joy. Wildflowers, wildflowers, wildflowers. I like that name, wildflowers. Purple Haze, Silent Trails, Escape from Reality, Happy Days, Hazy Days. Man, there's a lot. A lot of suggestions. All right, let's turn it around. I see what you want, Melanie. I see it. I see it. I see it. She wants that song by Billy Joel. In the middle of the night, I go walking in my sleep through the mountains of Perth to a river so deep. No one looking for something. Something so undefined. Well, they can only be seen by the eyes of the blind in the middle of the night. In the middle of the I go walking in the in the middle of the I go walking in the in the middle of the. Okay, what's she called? River of Dreams? Is that what you said? Uh, I already found. Now I missed it. What's the What's the name again? Okay, I got it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. All right. So this is painting number seven hundred and one which is just insane. There we go. Now we're calling it River of Joy. Excellent. So let's go. You guys can go check out my full length tutorials over on youtube.com slash paintwithjosh. More than 350 tutorials over there. Now, if you want to see the up close pictures and finished images of all of the paintings that we have, go follow me on facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. Over 153,000 followers over there. So let's go over all you guys on Facebook and YouTube. If you want to see me paint later on today, maybe once or twice, go over to TikTok and search the same as Instagram at paintwithjoshk. All right, just add a little K on the end for my last name. On, uh, on TikTok and Instagram. Now, if you want to go buy your own painting or your shirts or buy a hat or a beanie or a pillow or whatever, just to help support, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Now, if you're ready to see me spin this painting around, tell me in the comments, spin it, Josh. We want to see that beautiful painting one more time before the show is over, right? We got to sign the front, too. So if you want to see it spun around, maybe you just tuned in right now and you're like, what the heck? 
what's going on on the other side of this canvas. I gotta see what's back there. Well, tell me to spin it and I'll spin it. Maybe if everybody who's watching comments right at the same time, it will explode the algorithms and see more people, right? More people end up being in the show. Now we're gonna come up here, we're gonna spin it. Oh, look at this, guys. Probably just the best painting that we could have done on a Saturday Sessions, and I can't wait. This is gonna be a full-length tutorial. It's only an hour, about an hour-long tutorial. It'll take you to paint this painting. It does, it took me about 40 minutes just to do the prep work of laying out the acrylic gesso for this painting, though. No, only because my bridge was being a pain in the butt. But, <laughs> This one turned out fantastic. I really love it. We got to sign it again with the liner brush that Jeremy just sent us. And it's a original gold King Art 9050-1 script liner. Very small. Very long and very small. Let's put our signature down here this time. Right down here on the path. Oh, it's very... Very nice little liner brush. Man, cool. I dig it, guys. I dig it. I dig it. I'm so happy that it, I mean, it sold right away. It sold before, I mean, I was still downstairs and the thing sold. It was insane. Insane in the membrane. Insane in the brain. What? There we go. A couple of purple flowers in there, too. Just because they're purple, they just want to grow everywhere. They just want to be everywhere. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I mean, what else to tell you? We, this is funny about my old notes. I had 128,000 Facebook followers. That's at 153 now. We were at 153,000 TikTok followers. That's at like 190 something now. It's crazy. Almost a 200 followers. So we've had 701 paintings. I've got so many people to thank off of the wish list for buying me stuff. We have canvas prints available. We got new, you know, paint with Josh shirts. We got all sorts of things. Even from these old notes back here, right, that you can't even see. That's the, that's the beauty of show business. Can't even see them back here off screen, right? And I'm just looking at my notes. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see your guys' version of this painting. And, uh, you know, it turned out great. I just, I love it. I can't wait to go take a picture of it. Maybe I'll make prints. If you guys want me to make prints of it, when I post it on Facebook, go over and comment and say, oh, my God, I need a print of this. I need a print. And if I get enough people that want prints, then I'll make prints. Otherwise... It seems like people don't want the prints and they just want the originals. And that's fine to me. I'll just keep painting originals um, and not waste my time making the prints because it's a fair amount of time wasted when I have to go make one of those prints. So, I'll just try to, like, it's just going to stand like this. Hey, guys. So, but, uh, yeah, I can't wait to, uh, to come back. Maybe later on today on TikTok, we'll come back and paint another scene. Do a big tree. I want to print, someone says. Please make prints, this person says. Kayla Locke says, please make prints. Depends on how much his sale is. Uh, so this painting, actually, it was a little bit more expensive. It took me a long time to prep, and I knew it was going to be a lot of detail. And uh, so we had, this one was over 300 that it sold for. I want to print. So apparently there's a lot of people that want to have prints of this painting. So maybe I'll make some. Are we talking about poster prints, guys, or canvas prints? No, I'm, I'm going away from the big tree. I don't want the big tree in it anymore. This looks so stinking pretty the way it is. It doesn't even need a big tree. Doesn't even need it. There we go. Don't even need it, guys. I gotta clean that brush again. Okay, well. Like I said, if you want to see me paint later on, go follow me over on TikTok. We might come back and do a little painting. And uh, we'll see where we end up, right? That's the fun part. Never know where Josh is going to end up when he does his paintings. It could be something like this. It could be a crazy, you know, psychedelic, trippy space scene. Whatever we think. You know, so it could be something like that. Anytime you can, just craziness can pop out of Josh. So, this one's available too, by the way. You guys can purchase this. Unless this was the one that got sold. Uh, it's called Hollow Planet. And this is way back before I even started numbering the paintings. So, nice old one. And it's probably only about 100 to 130 bucks for that older one. So, nothing too crazy. But yeah, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to scrape up all the colors right here that we didn't use or that we did use. We're going to, it's not the stuff we didn't use. We're going to save that until later. So, like I said, I may come back over on TikTok later on. And uh, we'll paint up another scene. 
and we'll see. Maybe somebody will buy that one too. You never know. I've been on such a great streak, like such a lucky. I mean, of course, it's all luck, and I, I appreciate every single person who watches. Not people who just buy, the people who comment, the people who share. You guys help me just as much as the people that purchase paintings. Literally, without your guys' comments and shares, I wouldn't reach as many people, therefore not selling as many paintings, right? It's all about the reach. So anytime you see a Paint With Josh post, whether it's on TikTok, or whether it's on Facebook, or YouTube, comment on it. Comment on the Paint With Josh posts. That way I'll stay on your FYP, I'll stay on your feed, it'll still continue to show stuff. If you keep, if I, if you keep seeing my stuff and you don't like it or comment or, or share it, then Facebook thinks that you don't like my stuff anymore, and so it's not going to show it to you anymore. I had somebody send me a message, I used to get your stuff all the time and now I don't see it. Well, you stopped commenting on my posts, and Facebook was like, okay, well we won't show you that anymore, right? It's all done by robots, guys. So. You gotta be like a robot and go, ooh, this is a Paint With Josh post, I must comment, comment on post, comment on post, and that way it'll stay on your FYP, and it'll stay on your, your, your timeline, and I'll keep popping up in your feed and making you happy, right? But if, you, if uh, all of a sudden you stop seeing Paint With Josh, it's, it's mainly your fault. I'm still here doing this thing every week, right? And if you're not commenting or interacting enough, then Facebook or YouTube or, or TikTok is not going to show it to you because they think you don't like it, right? It's all the robots, man. we got to outsmart the robots. So, go over. Follow me on TikTok with, for probably at like 190,000 now. I don't even know. Uh, it was like 186 before, and I, every time I look, I keep seeing all these follows. So, hopefully, we got up to about 190. It would be fantastic. Um, yeah, this one turned out great. I can't think of anything else to do to it. Um, you know, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with me. It's been 78 minutes and uh, it turned out to be a fantastic show. So thank you, Melanie, for your purchase. Thank you for the other purchase that we got during the show, at least that I saw. I can't see them all because I'm behind. I'm in front of three cameras instead of behind them, right? But uh, yeah, I love you guys. Uh, take care. Have the rest of a good day. Bow! Get them out of here, Josh. They're done. It's normally London getting them out of here for me, but it's, uh, it's Josh today getting them out.